Here to talk about the results here in Illinois and across the country are Tonia Hill, reporter for the Tribe, and host of WVN's Afternoon Drive, attorney Kimberly Agowen. Thanks so much for coming in, guys. It's a pleasure Thank to be you. with you. Oh, it's great. What a whirlwind midterm we had. It, it turned out a lot differently, I think, than a lot of people thought. Lots of runoffs still going on, but it was a quick night. Let's first of all talk about voter turnout. Mm. Pretty high this year. Yeah, you know, and what's so interesting is my expectations were really low mm. after the primary. We had very low voter turnout for that. And I was thinking, if this is any in indication of what the general election is going to be, I thought, wow, not good. 41% right. in the city of Chicago. Wow. And that is a very good number. I don't think it's as quite as high uh, as 2018, according to the executive director mm -hmm. of the Chicago Board of Elections. But still pretty impressive. Yeah. What about the youngsters? They say Gen mm -hmm. Z came out in full force. Yeah, I was actually going to suggest that or introduce that as well, uh, millennial and Gen Z and often I am a millennial and we get a bad rap when it comes to voting and the criticism often is that we are more involved with social movements and not actually coming up and showing up to the polls but I think in Chicago specifically millennials were the second largest voter group. Why do you think that is? Uh, I just I think it's it's outreach I think also because just people want their voices to be heard and I think the like elected officials, like seeing our group show up in, in that way and also Gen Z means that they should listen to us. And I think it, abortion being a, a, big deal. a big issue yeah. as well. So people wanting to make sure that we retain, you know, our access to abortion. And, and according to our poll here, economy was number one, even over crime, which was surprising for a lot of people. Why now? I mean, there have been issues going on for a long time, especially during um, the Trump administration. Why now? the fever to come out and vote? Um, probably because of the Trump administration still. I, I think that there's still some uh, hangover from that. Uh, economy, because everyone feels the economy for the most part. Crime, well, we know here in the city of Chicago, there are more people feeling it, but in certain neighborhoods, we've felt it for decades. So we knew that that would be an issue, but I think that the economy right now, people are feeling this in their pocketbooks. They're feeling um, holidays are coming up. Are they going to be able to afford right. something nice either right. to eat for Thanksgiving or even gifts for Christmas. Inflation is out of control. And then all along, some of the elected officials continue to tell you, no, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And they're not feeling okay. So I think that that helps spur a lot of this intense need to get out and make your voice heard. As Carville said, it's the economy, stupid, That's And right. everybody's very, very aware of that. Let's talk about the red wave. It really, well, no, I'm going to talk about something else first. Okay. J.B. Pritzker and Darren Bailey, the gubernatorial mm -hmm. race. We went on the air, I think, at 7 o'clock and it's 7 o'clock 58 or whatever, we announced that Governor J.B. Pritzker was the winner. Why so quickly, do you think? I think, too, something else that I think is worth pointing out is that, you know, we had um, Dan Proft, who was the creator of these mailers that people got in their mailboxes that, were, that was spreading, like, mis misinformation about the Safety Act. And, you know, having the backing of Dick Uline, who, you know, donated big money to that. I think people showing up to vote also shows that the misinformation and the fear mongering around that, it didn't work. Yeah, so, you talk about the money. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Millionaires and billionaires are now running. They're spending all this money on this advertising. They're fueling like the U-Lines and, and the Ken Griffins and people like that. They're, and Dan Prof. They're putting all this money into these, these races. And are people sick of that? I think so. I think the how they came out and voted shows that. I think it's also showing that voters are listening and that, you know, we we as the media and the people who are supporting the Pre-Child Fairness Act, the organizers and all the organizations working to get that passed, were able to come in and help people make informed decisions by, you know, telling people, hey, this is actually what it is and this is what it does. Are people becoming more educated? Uh, I hope that they are, and because you have so many different ways to get your information now. You don't have to listen to it just from one source, and then also you can consider the source. So I think that uh, many people, especially during this election, some of the commercials may have even backfired mm -hmm. um, because they threw everything up on the screen. So much money involved, a lot of time, a lot of advisors. So I don't, I don't know if everyone's message really got across. Right. Now that Pritzker's in, what does he need to do for people of color that he didn't do last time around? Well, the one thing I would say is I would break that down even more. 
so not just people of color, but the black community in particular. I think that there are some fences definitely to mend, especially if he is thinking about rising to a higher office, which he says he's yes. not thinking about that right now. But that's right not now. what the rumors say, right? right? That's not the rumor, and that's not what the trend looks like. Um, I think that there needs to be some mended fences and to understand that elections come through the African-American community, whether we vote or whether we don't. In both situations, it is a, a very tangible voting block. Many say it's the backbone of the electorate. I would the, agree, you know, yes. the black vote. Totally. I would agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of people say that Pritzker got in with the suburban vote, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily the downstate vote, but the suburban votes, you know, especially in areas that don't usually vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. Well, I, there is also a lot to be said about the candidate who he ran against. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if the Republicans did their due diligence with the person that they chose. He did not appeal to a lot of people here. And you can't get past that idea of appealing, not just because he's very much with Trump, but also just in general, you can't just relate to him because he's a farmer. I mean, that, that, doesn't, that didn't really play that well. I, under, I understood the strategy. So. Abortion also, I know they're saying that that's not the number one thing, but I, I, I am almost positive that is another thing that helped Pritzker. Because do, you, do you think across the board now, even across the country, people are kind of tired of those far Trump-like Republicans? They want more moderate Republicans, would you say, Tonia? I think the way that people voted and the things that they voted for, like uh, we saw slavery being on the ballot in some races um, in the Critical country. Critical race theory, things like that. Things like that, and I think there was cannabis on some ballots in some states. Um, so I think people in general are supporting liberal policies. And I think like nationally, you know, for our elected officials, that's just showing them like, hey, these are the things that people support and want to get behind. So perhaps, you know, we should listen to voters and, and what they want. And quickly, we talked about the Safety Act just for a little bit. Kwame Raoul, who crafted that, is Attorney General again. Does that need to be amended or just explained more? Uh, I know that they had started a new campaign to kind of get away from what was being said about it and the misinformation about it. There may be some fixes that are necessary, but we have to also remember it is far larger than getting rid of bail, cash bail. It, it, is, it deals with a lot of different issues. And uh, the Attorney General and the rest of the, the Black Caucus, who were the authors of that bill, are going to have to do a better job of messaging. Um, but we'll see because the governor almost committed to some fixes on that. And state's attorneys, too. Yeah. You know, they've got to get involved with this, too, and because they're the ones who pretty much give the judges uh, the, 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 what is, the process on which should you let this guy or woman go because of they whatever they... They their information. Yeah, yeah they, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen unless they give the, the ruling. And so that's got to work as well. So a lot of things have to go into this. Um, do you think it, it is a surprise that... Um, Joe Biden, the person who's in power right now, I shouldn't say power, but in the White House right now, got more Democrats than we have in 20 years in the, in the House. I think that um, we need to stop giving so much attention to polls because the polls just were not correct on this election. We've seen it before. We saw it in 2016. So really, it is about the ground game. I think that Joe Biden and the Democrats really did the ground game. Uh, they ran away from this fear factor from what the Republicans were doing and were able to really get the message across about we don't want to go mm -hmm. backwards. Chuy Garcia announcing he's mm -hmm. throwing his hat in the ring for mayor. A mayor. February 28th is the election for that. How are we going to figure this all out, Tonya? Uh, this is, I don't know, it's, it's confusing. <laughs> the field is like We've super crowded. We have, all in, these, yeah. we have all these people, these candidates in, but I think it makes it interesting. You know, as a journalist, I'm kind of excited. Yeah. It's a game changer. Yeah. yeah. Him it's being a, in there mm -hmm. is a game changer. Definitely. Because he is a progressive, and you've got mm -hmm. several other people who are bona fide progressives. Brandon they are Johnson. all going to be going yeah, mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. the exact, as a matter of fact, if you look at the mayor's response, it was mm -hmm. typical Lori Lightfoot in the beginning, but then it turned into you are splitting the progressive vote, which shows that there is some concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ladies, thank you so much. What a fun discussion. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Hopefully you can come back for the mayoral election. Love to. All right.